There is a local legend that a highwayman called Pym used to lay in wait to ambush those who used the Packles route here at Pym Chair, although it is also thought that Pym was a preacher who gave sermons here. This ridge lies on the Derbyshire and Cheshire county boundary, and I had fantastic views from here over the Goitz Valley. Crossing into Cheshire, I began to follow the quiet lane westwards from Pym Chair. I've lived in the Peak District for a long time now, and over the years I've got to know it really well. But there are still so many parts of it that I haven't discovered yet. And today's walk is a good case in point as I shall be exploring part of the Peak District that falls within the county of Cheshire. After dropping down steeply, the lane levelled out as I arrived at a wonderful little church in the middle of nowhere. Jenkin Chapel stands in an isolated position at the junction of three ancient trackways known as Salter's Ways because they were used by pack horses carrying salt. Later the tracks were used by cattle drovers and sheep dealers. Because of its isolated position the church is kept locked except when services are held here. Guided visits can be arranged in advance and are available for groups. Jenkin Chapel was built using local materials in 1733 by local people. The tower was added in 1755. It is recorded in the National Heritage List for England as a designated Grade II listed building. There are various theories about the origin of the name Jenkin. One is that the junction was the trading site for a man called Jenkin from North Wales, and the track marking stone at this point was known as Jenkin Cross. Other theories are that Jenkin was the name of a local farming family, or that it was the name of a fiery Welsh preacher who preached at the horse fair held here.
What a wonderful little chapel. So isolated out here in the middle of nowhere. Fantastic. Moving on from Jenkin Chapel, I followed a path leading across the fields to Green Booth as I headed in the direction of Kettlesume. It's really lovely out here today. Well, normally on a Sunday, I like to have a bit of a lie-in because I potter around on a Sunday normally, and then I might go for a little walk somewhere later on during the course of the day. But this morning, I actually woke up at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> but it was such a lovely morning, and I thought, well, I may as well just get up and come out. So I've started this walk just before seven. It's after nine now. So, for the first couple of hours of this walk, I've not met a single soul. It's a really lovely time when the weather is nice to come out and do a walk. So I'm going to carry on along this path that goes through the fields, and I'll soon be arriving in the little village of Kettleshume. I eventually reached Kettlesume, which lies on the B5470 from Whaley Bridge to Macclesfield, in the valley of the Todd Brook, an offshoot of the River Goit. The name Kettlesume means Old Norse Kettles Island, or Kettles Water Meadow. 
The original settlement mainly consisted of a mixture of limestone and sandstone buildings, including the old church, built in the 19th century out of limestone quarried near Buxton. At 1,000 feet above sea level, Kettleshume is relatively high up, which makes the weather cold at times, but its location and climate make the land suitable for farming. The village was once a centre for the manufacture of candlewick material, but this ceased in 1937. Kettleshume was also the home of 19th century record breaker Amos Broadhurst, whose beard grew to a length of seven feet. From Kettleshume, I took a footpath leading upwards to Benthall Farm and on towards Taxall Edge. Passing Backhill Gate Farm, I was on Taxall Edge. This is part of the Long Ridge, marking the Cheshire and Derbyshire county boundary. The winds became much stronger as I started to make my way slowly southwards towards Pym Chair. But there was just one more important landmark for me to see before finishing the walk. Just beyond Taxel Edge, I came to Windgather Rocks, a fantastic gritstone crag, popular with those learning the basics of rock climbing. As the name suggests, the area is exposed to the prevailing westerly winds. The crag was featured in the first rock climbing guide to the Peak District, written by John Laycock, called Some Gritstone Climbs, published in 1913. Well, if you pardon the pun, the wind is certainly gathering again as I'm walking below wind gather rocks.
Well, I'm almost back at Pym Chair where I parked my car. And that was a lovely little walk I've done today. Jenkin Chapel, Kettleshume and Windgather Rocks.